Hey, okay, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the new feature in Blocky 2.0. And I'm talking about custom post blocks for all your custom post types in the Bodyboss app. Now, with Blockly 2.0, this is how it's going to work. When you purchase Blockly, you're going to get three files. First is the main plugin, Blockly. And then there's an add on called Blockly uh, Custom Post Blocks. And then you're also going to get your app kit. Now, once you get these files, you just go ahead and install Blockly 2.0, the base plugin, as well as the add on, which is the Blockly Custom Post Blocks. So let's quickly jump in and install that on my site. So once you install that and activate it, what's going to happen is if you now go into Blockly right here, you're going to see this menu here that says custom post blocks. So go ahead and click on that. And then you're going to see all the custom post types that are installed or available on your site. And then you can go ahead and turn on or turn off the ones that you want to generate a block for. So in this case, I have all of mine turned on so you can see here where the plugin is detecting WooCommerce products, give WP donation forms, uh, space, uh, events coming the pro spaces, uh, game press badges and any other custom post types that you already have existing on your site. So once you turn them on, then the next thing you're going to do would be just click on next. Now when you get here, this is where the mapping happens. Now, the thing is, your custom post would have or will have uh, custom fields. And those custom fields don't normally, by default, get exposed uh, in your REST API. Or, for example, when you create a custom post and you click on that post and you're open to view the post, you won't see the custom fields that are associated with that post. Rather, you will see you know, the post title, the featured image, the post content, and ERSA. Those are the default fields that come with any custom post type. But if you are, if you have custom fields that are part of that custom post type, then you're going to have to do something in order for that to show even on the web. And the same thing is applicable in the Bodybus app. So what we've done here is we've given you uh, a template where you're going to map your custom fields. So let's say we want to map uh, WooCommerce product. This is a uh, WooCommerce product, right? So it's got the generic template and then we're going to map. So once you click on this field, what's going to happen is that this is going to pull all of the custom fields that are associated with that post type and you can map them to return those values. So in this case, I'm mapping price and then in block field two, I'm going to map this stock status. So whether this, the product is in, is in stock or not, right? And so that's for our uh, uh, WooCommerce products. And then the next one I'm going to map is, uh, let's map events, right? So for events, I'm going to go ahead and click here as well, right? So you've got all of the fields that are returned in your event calendar pro. So I'm going to map event cost, uh, cost and then I'm also going to map the event start date to block field two. Uh, let's do uh, badges for gaming press, right? So we come here. Uh, we map the gimme press points that is required for this particular um, uh, for a, a badge and then also the uh, the type of point that you need in order to obtain a badge. So you can map anything. So you can see all of these things here. You can map them. You have to use your own creativity and your own initiative. You know what you want to reflect in the block and then you can just map that. And then um, same thing goes for uh, WP Jobs Manager. So I can come here. I will map the remote position, the location of the job in my block field one, and then I will also map the um, you know whether the job is expiring or not. I'm gonna map that as well in here. And so once you do that, then what you just have to do is just come here and click generate. And once you click generate, it's going to go ahead and generate that block, and then. When you go to the app page, you will see all of those blocks there. So let's jump to the app page. So here we are in the app page. I'm gonna refresh this page right here. So now here, um, if I go ahead and uh, click on to add a block. Now, if you scroll all the way down, now you can see, you can see all of those blocks are shown up here. Now, this is really amazing. We are so excited about this and so proud of what we've done here. I mean, think about it. 
before I started building Blockly, you know, it takes a lot to even build one block and that costs a lot of money. But now with just the click of a finger, you have as many blocks as you want or, you know, whichever ones that you've turned on. So let's go ahead and add a WooCommerce product here. So let me search for product and and I'm also going to add uh, events. And let's also add Gimme Press. Oh, well, badges actually, that's what they're called. So I'm just gonna go in here. So I've got those three in here. Now I'm just gonna go in and start prepping this up. So I'll select that product and I'll call this uh, maybe, let's say, uh, new, new inventory or new, new release. And then this is another magic that you're going to love. So right here, we've given you uh, meta meta text or what I call before and after uh, text that you can actually use to create context for that custom uh, uh, post. Uh, sorry, for those custom fields. So let, let me even show you what those uh, what we've done here so that you can just kind of have an idea. So I'm going to take you to view the JSON, which is the actual data that is being returned. So if you come here, you're going to see that oh, I haven't saved that page. Uh, let me save this page right here. OK, so let's refresh this. So you can see here, this is the data that is being returned for me. Now you can see that here is returning the title and is also returning uh, the permalink of that particular uh, uh, post, the featured image, which we're going to use. Now the category and all that. Now you can see here the block field one. Remember, we mapped block field one to the price of the product, right? So to the price of the product. Then we also mapped block field two to the um, whether the product is in stock or not in stock. Now, when this shows up in the block in your app, what you're going to see there is the image, the title, and then you're just going to see 250, but 250 what? It doesn't make any sense, right? And that's where these guys come in. So what you can do now is with this selected, I'm just going to go here in my first prefix text one, I'm going to put, I would say uh, price, or you could even say uh, price here, right? Now, you don't have to use the suffix, but you can use that. So in this case, let me say per, I'll say per year, something like that. Now for the prefix test two, this one actually goes into, um, let, let's, let's jump in here so that I can show you that. Now this, like I showed you, there is a second field here that is called block lift field two. So I'm going to use that to give context to that particular field. So in my case here, I'm just going to jump in here. Now, remember what I marked in block field two is in stock, right? So I'm just going to say stock status. So I'm going to say stock status here. And then um, I could put, if I want something to be at the end of it, but in this case, I don't need anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and click uh, update here. Now let's jump into events, right? So I'm going to say upcoming upcoming events and remember for my events i mapped the event uh cost and then the event start date right so i'm gonna say uh event oh actually let's say uh price price here so here and then for my event start date i would say uh start date Right here and then um, I'm just gonna go ahead and yep and update this now for gimme press I'm going to come in to badges and I'll call this uh, badges now what did we map so we mapped um, so let's look at the data that was actually returned for gimme press here uh, we mapped the uh, the points required 
and of course the the type of uh, uh, point that is required in order for you to get that particular badge so I'm going to go ahead and save for my prefix test for the first field I'm gonna say uh, number number of points oh, I could actually say points required and then I'm gonna go down to um, this one I'll say point type oh, sorry I'm gonna save this now the suffix comes after the actual field the you know the custom field so you can do whatever you want there or maybe you can say you know uh, yeah whatever you want to say I don't know um, now let me drop in WP jobs manager so let's go to WP uh, jobs actually so let's put jobs here so for my jobs uh, I think let's see what did I map for my jobs so let's go here so for my job I mapped the the position whether you know the remote position where the, the job is at and then the date that the job expires right and so I'm just gonna jump in uh, here and I'm gonna select this job here and I'm gonna say uh, uh, trending trending jobs and then I'm gonna go to my prefix so the first map the first field was um, the position I mean location so I'll say location and then uh, this other one, the prefix test for the, uh, I think it's the expiration date, right? What was that? Job expires. And then I'll say application and buy, right? And so right here. And then let's save that. All right, so you can see here, if I go ahead and refresh this uh, data page, you can now see that those fields that I have actually mapped in there are all showing up now, right? So let's jump into the app itself and take a look at what this actually looks like. All right, so here we are in an app page, right? So I'm just going here and all I just need to just is to pull down and refresh. Bam. look at that so the first one is uh, products right so you've got uh, you know products here and then uh, you have your events your event prize and then you have points required and then our location so um, so right here if I go ahead and click on this now you can see here it says stock status in stock and then uh, the title itself, and then it says price $250 uh, per year. And so I'm just going to go ahead and sort of, uh, so here it says price, right? There is no dollar sign there, right? So what I need to just do is, let's jump in here, and let's go to that product block, and I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go here and say product, and then I'll put a dollar sign, right? I don't want a space at the end. So I'm just going to put a dollar sign there. And then uh, let's jump right back into uh, the app. So if you come in here and we refresh this page again, you can see that price $250 per year. And then um, if I go to the see all or the all post screen, same thing, price $250 per year, stock status in stock. Now, this is really cool. So the reason we give you those prefix text so that you can add context to this uh, custom fields because the custom fields just return the value they don't return the label and so you can kind of you know put those labels yourself based on whatever you know that is going to be for you so that's how this works uh, let me know what you think about it i'm so excited about this and now what you're seeing here really is that uh this is the first release now subsequent releases that are coming up in the next couple of days and a couple of weeks I mean, every week we're going to be releasing new uh, uh, new templates that really 
uh, begin to be more specific to the kind of uh, custom posts. In this case, I mean, this is a generic block, right? But for things like WooCommerce, you want to see something that is much more tailored for a product per se. And so we're gonna be getting those out as well. When you click on this box, it's gonna open that custom post in a web format, which is an ingenious thing that BuddyBus has done because you need to have uh, some type of custom code in order to open your custom post type as a native app split. Now, in the future release, we're going to be releasing a uh, support for uh, you know, native app screen for the custom uh, post type. So right now in this first release, we're releasing, uh, it's going to be opening as web formats, which you guys are already familiar with. But in the subsequent release, it's going to open as a native app screen. Now, the reason why we did it, we've actually built that, but the reason why we're not releasing it now is because there's a lot that goes with it. And so we want to sort of pace the release so that we don't overwhelm you guys and it's easy for us to manage that because there's a whole, like there are hundreds, if not thousands of, you know, unique custom post types that people are using on their apps, in recipe, products, uh, projects, uh, name it, all kinds of things. So we really want to get into a dialogue with, you know, every one of you so that we can understand how you are using custom post types in your app as we begin to bring out, you know, those templates that will actually allow us to support natively your, uh, your custom post type when you actually open the post detail screen. So let me know what you think. Um, I'm, I'm sure and I hope that you love this. And let me know what you what you think in the comment below. If you have any ideas or suggestions on how we can improve things, I'm looking forward to hearing that from you guys. Thank you so much.